So today, I want to talk about Batman. Specifically, I want to talk about how other people on the internet have been talking about Batman. Because if you ask me, Batman may be the most overanalyzed character in all of comics. So the point where the people overanalyzing him seem to actively be trying to suck the joy out of Bat fans. To which I just have to say, chill out, man. Sorry, I meant to say, chill out, man. Better? Yeah, that was a little bit better. So what do I mean by overanalyzing Batman? Well, every think piece I've seen on the internet, be it a blog or a video or what have you, seem to actively be trying to break down the minutiae of Batman and sort of prove that he's not really a good hero. What I mean by that is these pieces will often talk about some of the sketchier elements of Batman, like how he's a billionaire who seems to be embezzling money to fund his crusade instead of donating it to charity, or how he's sort of unstable and thinks every night is Halloween, and he endangers young boys on a regular basis. Which, okay, yes, fair points. But I don't really see this kind of nitpicking when it comes to other equally as deserving heroes. I mean, Spider-Man dresses in a stupid costume every day and has just as much, if not more, mental anguish as Batman does. Nobody seems to really give him a hard time. Tony Stark is just as rich, and nobody says he should give up being Iron Man and donate all his money to charity. And yeah, he beats up his share of poor people, but he also beats up a lot of rich people. And super villains. And the whole young boys thing... Grow up, really? I mean, how old are you? He's building a family. It's the one thing he never had as a child, and he's trying to make sure these orphans grow up to have a life he never had. Also, he donates to charities. Plural. The Thomas Wayne Foundation for Medicine and Medical Research, and the Martha Wayne Foundation for Arts and Education. That's canon. So, yeah, it seems like everybody likes to just break down and pick on Batman for this reason or that reason, but why do they really do it? What's the main overall reason for doing this? Well, I have a couple of theories. The first one being that he's supposed to be the realistic hero of the DC Universe. He has no superpowers, he's a pure-blood human, so anything that would seem unnatural or unrealistic would just seem out of place in his world. Fair enough, but let's be honest here. There is nothing realistic about Batman. At all. There's a difference between feeling real and being realistic. When something feels real, you believe it, even if it's completely fictional. Realistic means it's trying to emulate real life, and there's nothing realistic about a man who dresses up as a bat who fights a clay monster, or a frozen mad scientist, or a 600-year-old cult leader, or a man-bat. We know Batman isn't real and doesn't make sense sometimes. That can be said of literally any work of fiction. Take Macbeth, one of the greatest works of literature ever produced, but it has witches, so it's unrealistic and it sucks. Internet logic. Let me put it to you this way. The original Star Wars trilogy felt real because everything was lived in and tangible and there were actual props and sets and whatnot. The Star Wars prequels did not feel real because it was all computer animated and it felt like a cartoon. See what I'm getting at here? Now this next point sort of ties into the whole realism thing, but Batman has been associated with some pretty dark stories in the past 20-30 years. And I feel like Batman has become the scapegoat for the dark, gritty realism trend that's been sweeping across fiction, especially fiction originally designed for children. Batman's always scowling and fighting murderers and rapists and corrupt politicians and cops. But he also looks like this and fights a clown. And yeah, that's silly and doesn't really fit with a grim dark tone. But you know what? Throw a rock and you'll hit a hundred more grim dark stories that go much further than Batman ever does, and oftentimes a lot worse. What else? Well, I don't know if you know this, but Batman's pretty popular right now. We just got done with a trilogy of three of the most critically and commercially successful comic book based movies of all time, in addition to three of the most critically and commercially successful comic book video games of all time. This is not to mention his comic books, where Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo is consistently one of the only DC books in the top 10 every month, in addition to all the other Bat books DC puts out. He's sort of become a patron saint of the internet, a no-nonsense badass who can beat anyone and do anything, even though he's only human. And really, when you're on top, everyone just wants to bring you down, whether you're a famous musician or a fictional character. Now, the point of this video is not to defend a make-believe person who's pretty much a corporate mascot at this point. He doesn't need that from me. No, I just wanted to highlight a meme that has gone on for a lot longer than usual. Usually when a superhero is picked apart, it only lasts for about a week. Picking apart Batman has been going on for a while now. 
Around the time Age of Ultron came out, there was a lot of discussion on the internet how Iron Man wouldn't be realistic because every time he stopped short, he'd crash and liquefy inside his own suit. Nobody really seems to bring that up anymore. But people will love to just remind everybody that Dark Knight Returns is kind of fascist, even though that was 30 years ago. But at the end of the day, I just can't let people on the internet ruin something that I've enjoyed for nearly three decades now. And neither should you. Unless that person on the internet is me, in which case you should listen to me and let me explain. I might have a good reason for it. What do you guys think? Do you think Batman is getting a little too overanalyzed? Do you think I'm making all this up? What superheroes do you think should or are overanalyzed in addition to Batman? Let me know down below or literally anywhere on the internet. Like if you like, subscribe if you really like, share this video with your friends. Thank you all so much for watching and for bearing with us while we still try out these new mics somewhere here. I will see you next time. Now there are two main ways publishers deal with this to make sure that their books come out on time. First solution, get a fill-in artist. If the main artist is having trouble meeting deadlines, the publisher will get a fill-in artist to do all the rest of the work. We live in a world now where, you know, creators, they want to make, you know, the games they want to make and uh, the Japanese publishers won't let them, so they turn to Kickstarter. You right, know, that's at, totally fine. Yeah, I mean, we get that. And the fact that... But, but but when you have it in the Sony press conference, that means Sony already supports it. 